Can you replace a desktop PC with a mini PC? Some are already doing exactly that, but my question is, can it truly be considered a real replacement? Today I'll be putting the Geekcom A5 device to the test, which comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 8-core CPU, fairly powerful AMD Radeon graphics, as well as 32GB of RAM plus a lightning-fast 512GB NVMe SSD. Can you perform your day-to-day -day tasks properly on such a mini PC and actually play games in your free time? A word of caution, there are both huge advantages over a regular desktop PC, but also noteworthy disadvantages. Today we'll not only be looking at the overall performance this A5 has to offer, what ports it comes with, etc., but we will also measure its power consumption, its temperatures, as well as its noise level in various scenarios. For today's model by the brand Ecom, you'll have to shell out about 400 US dollars on the manufacturer's official website, or roughly $450 on Amazon right now, depending on when you purchase and what kind of discount codes you have. So let's get to it. A quick praise to Geekcom for the impressive product presentation while unboxing it. The scope of delivery is quite extensive, I'd say. Included is the actual mini PC, the power cord and the power adapter slash power supply rated at an output power of 120 watts, an HDMI cable, screws and a metal plate complying with the VESA standard to basically mount the mini PC onto a wall or behind monitors, TVs and the like. Last but not least, a quick start guide. Let's keep it short and sweet. At the heart of the A5 is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H CPU based on Zen 3 released back in 2021. We are offered 8 cores and 16 threads. I'd like to point out that not long ago I checked out a similar mini PC which had a similar CPU in it and in theory being more power efficient. I'm talking about the 5800U. The difference is that today's 5800H doesn't operate at a TDP of only up to 25 watts, but can be configured to run at up to 54 watts, according to AMD. This is also reflected in the significantly higher base clock. As far as graphics are concerned, we'll have to rely on integrated AMD Radeon graphics based on Vega 8, which is actually fairly capable and can even power multiple monitors at 4K 60Hz pretty cool, especially for heavier, productive use cases is that Geekcom equips their A5 with 32GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM operating in dual channel. Finally, there's a Lexer and M620 NVMe SSD installed in here, sporting a capacity of 512GB. The read and write speeds achieved are of course great, no doubt about it. This device measures 117 by 112 mm and is only 49 mm in height, making it extremely compact. As a fan of minimalist designs, I actually really like the look. The build quality appears to be exceptionally good, that's all I can say. Although the A5's outer shell is made of plastic, its internal frame is made of robust metal. You definitely feel the quality when picking up the mini PC with your hands. We are offered plenty of ports here. Starting at the front, there's the power button, a 3.5mm audio jack, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, so these offer a bandwidth of 10 gigabits, one of which is even PD rated, basically rated for some pretty high power delivery. On the opposite side, we are really going to town. Two pieces of USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with 10 gigabits and display port capability, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 in Type-A form, including an old-fashioned USB 2.0 port, two full-size HDMI 2.0 and right in the center 2.5 gigabit LAN. On the left and right of the device, there is a Kensington lock and SD card reader respectively. Coming back to the video outputs, we're in theory talking of a total of four here because there's two HDMI and two of these USB-C ports capable of DisplayPort output, which means, altogether, this thing could drive a whopping four monitors. By loosening just four screws on the bottom, we are given access to the inside of the mini PC, at least that part that allows for upgrades. The already mentioned Lexar SSD of the type M.2.2280 being already pre-installed in here with a length of 80mm. In addition, 
there would theoretically be another free, unoccupied slot, but for shorter models. The brand used here for that 3200MHz RAM is unknown to me, but it serves as well. What I particularly like about Geekcom offering us here is that we, as the user, are able to still install and screw a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive into place in here if we want to extend our storage that way. Windows 11 Pro comes already pre-installed as the OS. When you first power on the A5, we have several languages to choose from, which I always think is great. Once I reached the desktop, I was pleasantly surprised about how recent the version of Windows was before even connecting to my Wi-Fi network. Geekcom activated Windows using a digital license. It turns out they haven't gone with a volume key, but an OEM key. I applaud them for that. Bloatware, or rather third-party software, there is none to be found on here. Nothing is pre-installed here. So what you're dealing with is a totally clean, fresh Windows installation. Excellent. Regarding Wi-Fi, both 2.4 and 5 GHz bands are supported. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 are on board. When reading out the individual clock speeds, I noticed that the memory speed fluctuates a lot. That is because the voltage is automatically reduced when idling in order to keep the power draw low and make the device as power efficient as possible. This actually has a huge positive impact on the overall power consumption as I was able to measure in the end. Once the system is used more heavily, the memory clocks up to its full 3200 MHz. At full load, a 5800U with a CPU package power of 25 watts can achieve a clock speed of about 3 GHz. With today's 5800H, which was configured to run with a maximum package power of 42 watts, I can easily achieve around 3.3 GHz. However, we are talking pure CPU load. When throwing the integrated graphics into the mix, the CPU clock speed drops significantly, which ultimately even leads to lower temperatures. So now in order for us to get a better picture on the CPU performance, here's the Cinebench R23 test I ran. Obviously, we are grabbing the number one spot with today's Ecom A5 equipped with the high performance 5800H CPU. Noticeably over 10,000 points and the multi-core run is pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie. Out of the box, the Radeon graphics unit is allocated 512 megabytes of video memory. However, since I have 32 gigabytes of system memory anyway, I decided to grant the graphics unit 2 gigabytes within the BIOS. Nonetheless, expectations must be lowered, because while gaming at the right resolutions and graphics details is indeed possible, depending on how demanding those respective game titles end up being, you might still encounter stuttering or consistently low frame rates. It is therefore important that you don't expect this machine to run the latest and greatest demanding titles out there, simply because the CPU's integrated graphics will not be able to keep up with those. Slightly older games or generally more lightweight ones usually do not pose any problems. Image and video editing is more likely to work because it doesn't depend that much on the GPU performance. However, expectations need to be lowered a bit here too, since we still have to keep in mind it's a mobile CPU we are dealing with at the end of the day. So everything in moderation. Nevertheless, in applications we are being offered very acceptable performance. It is therefore a no-brainer that watching 4K videos and movies won't be an issue in the slightest. Playback is super smooth without any stuttering whatsoever. If we now take a look at the measured power consumption, temperatures and noise levels, I was at first amazed at how little power the Geekcom A5 mini PC draws, regardless of whether it is under light or heavy load. The temperatures are accordingly low when the CPU's load is low. However, the A5 does not operate without any fan. It's not a semi-passive design, even when idling. With a measured 38 decibels, the mini PC at all times is audible, yet still being in a range that can be considered acceptable if you ask me. What I find more annoying is that the fan can ramp up quite frequently, even with close to no load at all. The A5 mini PC obviously has a pretty aggressive fan curve, and that's something you should be aware of before buying. When utilizing the CPU 100%, I was able to read out the temperature of exactly 100 degrees Celsius. That's certainly a bit high, 
but according to AMD, still totally fine for the 5800H CPU. Depending on the configuration, the 5800H's maximum operating temperature is at 105 degrees. As already mentioned before, the temperature does drop as soon as there's a mixed load of CPU and iGPU while gaming for instance. The explanation is simple, the CPU clock drops down. I reached a max noise level of 49 decibels. To be honest, that I would no longer consider as quiet. It can become a bit uncomfortable when sitting right next to the device for a long period of time. But it's probably the price we have to pay for the performance offered in this small form factor. Conclusion. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of such a mini PC compared to a regular desktop PC? Starting with the price. A high performance mini PC like this one can be cheaper than a comparable desktop counterpart, let alone laptops. Of course, such a statement should be taken with a grain of salt and be viewed with caution since it always depends on one specific configuration. When it comes to performance, it needs to be said that we generally speaking do better with desktop PCs, especially when it comes to gaming performance. But here too, it all depends on whether you use integrated or dedicated graphics, which also heavily depends on pricing. When it comes to ports, both mini and desktop PCs don't differ that much when considering that today's Geekcom A5 features ports with a bandwidth of 10 gigabits, including two Type-C ports. Without a doubt, you'll save a lot more space with something compact such as a mini PC and you could even take such a device with you somewhere, at least more easily if necessary. A disadvantage resulting from this, the significantly worse cooling as opposed to its desktop counterpart. This also means that the noise levels could even be perceived as unpleasant due to the single tiny internal fan. Desktop PCs have become really quiet these days. One argument in favor of the desktop is its upgradability. You can easily replace the CPU, motherboard, cooling etc and carry out upgrades that are not possible with the mini PC here apart from the RAM and SSD. Where a desktop simply cannot hold a candle to a mini PC in any configuration is the power consumption. This is probably by far the biggest selling argument for a mini PC. Our usual standard tasks, be it office stuff or light image and video editing, is carried out much more power efficient with the Geekcom A5. Sure, maybe with sometimes less performance, but still. Meaning that the device can be used and operated for many hours a day without even having a major impact on the power bill. Definitely a very attractive, compelling argument for home theater and NAS setups. So to answer the question from the beginning of the video, whether or not a mini PC can be viewed as a full replacement for a desktop PC, I have to admit, there is no definitive answer to it. You should primarily look at your individual needs and areas of application. What exactly are you planning to do with the PC? What do you need it to do? It doesn't always have to be some kind of performance beast and if you're willing to make compromises when it comes to gaming, you might end up really happy using such a compact PC like this one. But if you wish to have better upgrade options overall, you should choose the desktop. Basically, I'm pretty excited about today's Geekcom A5. I really, really like it, but both desktop and mini PCs come with their pros and cons. So I wouldn't really be talking of a replacement per se. I personally would buy such a compact device as an addition to my desktop PC. I don't always need what feels like endless performance, so I can sometimes complete the work I have to do in a more power efficient way. In the end, of course, a very individual decision. In any case, I can give a big praise to today's Geekcom A5. To date, it is one of the best I've had, not only in terms of performance, but also in terms of its features overall. It is also super power efficient. Probably the biggest disadvantage of today's device is its noise level. This mini PC is not particularly the quietest, especially at higher loads. However, I wouldn't go as far and call it excessively noisy. Anyway, the Geekcom A5 deserves a thumbs up and strong recommendation from me overall. With that said, thanks so much for watching and until the next one.